you won't get a negative 4x. You get something else. So this term is not right. Oh, yeah, you're right, negative 2x to the second power, because you need to divide it by the power on top. Yeah, that's my fault. Okay, so can you change it, right? Can you change all the, can you make corrections to all this? Yes. Okay, so, let me see, what can I put? Do you want me to correct it on my notebook and redo it? You you can it's easy right? You, you, yeah okay. Uh, so. This mistake is not so difficult to 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 do it. You, just, you don't have to rewrite this. You, the, the term is right. You don't have you don't have to rewrite them. Just correct the mistake. Right. Okay. So you want me to write it on the chat on the chat? I don't know why it's doing the. Uh... It doesn't matter. Wherever you feel comfortable. Okay. So just give me a second. So it will be this, I will go for them from zero to two. Right, so can you, re, can you re, recalculate? Okay, so give me, give me a. Actually, you only have to change one term, right? Just this term. You just have to change this term. Okay, so that will be, let's make a second. You know what? Minus four. Answer, right? Minus four? Yes. Will be plus four. Where? Where is plus four? Where is minus four? I mean, sorry, just give me a second. Just a second. Tell us, let me ask you this. Did you do this homework yourself? Yeah, I did it from the uh, textbook. I had some, uh, there's okay. some sample, right. of okay, great. sample two. Okay, you just see the, right, the only thing you have to change is from negative 4x to negative 2x squared, right? Mm -hmm. so all you have to change is this term and this term, right? You don't have to change the two times x raised by third, x raised by cube divided by three. Those terms are perfect. So yeah, the, uh, yeah that will be negative two, zero so that won't that will still be zero right so negative two times zero this will still be zero so all you have to change is this one negative four times two change it to be okay so that still be eight that still be eight right the answer is right but this you get negative two times two squared right yeah yeah it's still negative eight yeah that's why i said your answer is right but just a mistake here. Okay, great. You are able to. Let me ask you one more question. Let's go to the top. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. On line four and line and line five, you're missing something. Can you tell me what are you missing? Line one, two, three, four, four and five. You said. Four and five. Yes. Okay. Uh, I forgot to put the uh, x equals zero. That's zero. right. What about line four? Uh, say up equals zero again. That's right, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't get the x equals zero, x equals two, right? Yes. Okay, good job. All right, thank you, Carlos. Thank you. Okay, next one.
So we had Sophia, we had Carlos, Kevin, Stanley, Victoria, Amir, Kaiser, Henning, Victoria, Zuli. Okay, anyone is ready? All right, I see Hennens. Go ahead, Hennens. Hennens, we cannot hear you. Can you guys see the problem? Yeah. Okay. Um, so for this question, they give you y equal cosine pi x and y equal 4x squared minus 1. And when I drew the graph, you can see that they intersect at negative one, negative half and half. Is that the cosine? Okay. So those will be the boundaries. And so you use a equal integral one half and negative one half cosine pi and x cosine pi pi x minus four x squared minus one dx. And then for next two step you take the integrate so you get sine pi x over pi minus 4x the third over 3 plus x and then you plug in negative x for the first one minus a negative one half of this second part and then you get 2 pi plus 2 over 3. I don't see 2 pi you got 2 pi? Yeah because you take the integrate for the third step so you get sine pi x over pi what's and your you, answer what's your result two pi plus two over three wait can you guys see it or no yeah i see two over pi i don't see two pi oh, yeah, yeah two over pi plus two over three. Oh, okay all right so let me ask you some questions so you are trying to find the area it's trying to find the area of this. I'm trying to find the area of this. So one is given, you're trying to find the area in between of those two functions, right? Yes. So, okay, so how do you figure out your lower limit and the upper limit? Oh, because the that's where they intersect, like the pi, I mean the cosine graph, and the other graph. Like that's oh, when the cosine graph hits zero and the other graph hits zero. Oh, okay, I see. So you use the graphing, right? Because there's yeah. no way you can solve this equation. Okay, great. Anybody has any questions? All right, thank you, Henny. Okay, who's this? I see someone's work. 16. Karen's, I think. Karen, we cannot hear you. Um, hold on. Yeah, we hear you now, but we can't. We, your screen is gone. Oh. I'm sorry, it's lagging right now. It's back, it's back, right. Okay. So the one I did is 16. So basically, what I did was, uh, hold on. Well, first, I saw the first equation. Since the first equation is x equals y to the power of 4, I thought it, was be, it would be easier to write the second equation in, ter in terms of y. So I, so I did that, and it turned into x equals 2 minus y to the power of 2. I found intersections just by setting the equation equal to each other, moved all the terms to the left, and equal it to 0. 
and then factored it out and got the terms y equals one and y equals negative one. We reject temporarily y squared equals negative two because that just results into imaginary numbers. And since I, I wrote this in terms of y, we're gonna have to use the y um y axis for the for the domain. And because we found an intersection from zero from negative one to one, just by looking at the graph, you can tell that the domain is zero to one. You and then you subtract the right uh, equation, which is a two minus y squared, which we got from y equals rad two minus x, uh, minus the left equation, which is y to the power of four dy. And after that, just take the integral, which is two y minus one over three y to the power of three minus one over five y to the power of five um, from one to oh, from zero to one. And then you can just take the equation at one since the equation at zero is just zero. And then it equals to two minus one over three minus one over five minus zero. And then you just simplify it all the way to two over uh, 22 over 15. Okay, it looks great. Anyone has any questions? So this one we're cutting along y axis, right? The axis, it depends on, we write the lower limit, upper limit. We think about the, we think about the, uh, the x value, right? It's going from left to right. So we use the right one, subtract the left one. Okay, looks great. Thank you, Karen. Uh, next one. If anyone has any questions, speak up. All right, I see someone's screen here. 13, 13, Stanley. Stanley, your screen is showing, but I cannot hear you. Hello, Stanley, we cannot hear you. Hello? Yeah, we hear you now. Uh, the interval, I found that intersected at one, and then at the problem, it gave us that uh, x was equal to zero. So I have zero over here. And I found both functions uh, left and the right, so I did e to the x power minus x to the e to the x power x times e to the x power, and found the uh, integral of that, and it got negative e to the x power times x plus 2 e to the, 2 times e to the power of x plus c. And then we don't need a constant here. Uh, and then when I plugged in, uh, when I use the fundamental theorem calculus, I just plugged in the into x, and then I got e minus two as the area. I see. So you skip some steps. Can you explain to us how, how do you get from the first line to the second line? Uh, what'd you say? So you skip some steps. Can you explain to us how did you get from the first line to the second one? I just found the antiderivative of the uh, try to find the antiderivative of the problem of this thing, of the equation over here. How did you find? Okay, so so antiderivative of e to the x is. Yeah, actually, you know, we didn't talk about the skills of integration. Skills of integration has a big, big one called integration by parts. Um, so like e to the x, antiderivative is still e to the x. So only this part. 
Because when we antiderivative, we need to use something called integration by parts. Integration. By integration by parts, mm -hmm. it's like this. Remember, we have if we have two functions, right? We have f g prime, f g prime. When we take a derivative of product of two functions, we do f prime g plus f g prime. Remember this? Oops, I cannot move. F g. So when we when we integrate this, so when we integrate, so we could put the integration sign because we have equation, we can put the integration sign, right? So when we integrate, we take a derivative that goes back to that that goes back to just to f g. So f g equals to integration sign f prime g i'm going to add integration sign later plus integration sign f g prime so let me add the integration sign here i'm just taking this opportunity to explain to everybody what is integration by parts because to anti differentiate x e to the x we need to know this skill and which we did not get a chance to talk about it in this course and hopefully you will learn in 155 course all right so this is the thing so fg equals this we can rearrange this we can rearrange this we write this term or this term equals to fg minus that term so to anti-differentiate x e to x we just leave a negative sign up in you know, our side to anti-differentiate x e to the x, what do we do? We think we think f of x, oops, f of x equals to x. And the g of x equals to e to the x. Okay. So think this way. Then we want to use this. We want to use that. Then we'll say, what's f prime? Well, f prime equals to one, right? Derivative of x is as a one. What's a g prime? g prime still e to the x. So let's use this uh, the formula. The formula is the same. F times g. X times x times e to the x x times e to the x equals to integration sign i'm going to add a later f prime times g f prime is one one times g which is e to the x then plus also integration sign i'm going to add a later plus integration sign and f prime g right what's f uh f g prime What's f? f is x. What's g prime? g prime is e to the x. All right? Let me add the integration sign here. So we have integration sign here. We can split integration sign, right? We need integration sign here. So you see, this gives us this integration of x e to the x equals to x e to the x minus integration e to the x and the integration of e to the x is e to the x right so that's why we have here after we integrate we have e to the x minus because we have negative sign minus x times e to the x minus e to the x minus minus e to the x become plus e to the x that's why we get a 2e to the x. That's why we get a 2e to the x. So let me write one more step. So here we have integration sign x e raised by x equals to x e raised by x minus e to the x. Okay. 
right? So x e to the x this term equals the x times e to the x minus integration of e to the x. Well, integration of e to the x is still e to the x. So this term, if we get negative, so we put a negative sign here, we put a negative sign here, minus, minus, this become plus. So after we integrate this term, we get a negative x e to the x, negative e to the x, x, plus e to the x, plus e to the x. Then add this e to the x. So we have 2 e to the x minus e to the x times x. So that's integration by parts, but basically it comes down from product rule. All right. Right, so when, once we, we anti-differentiate what we integrate, we just plug into the to the lower limit and upper limit. Okay, let me ask you one more question, Stanley. How do you get lower limit zero? How did you get the upper limit to be one? Stanley? Uh, I just plugged in a graph. I'm sorry? Are oh, you just plugging into the graph? Yeah. You get oh. the upper. You get the can you solve it? Like if sometimes we don't have a graph, can you solve algebraically? Uh, let me see. So there are two functions. One function is e to the x. The second function is x times e to the x. How do we solve for intersection of two functions? We set the two functions equal to each other, right? Yeah. No, can you try to solve to you know to, to show us this one? While Stanley is preparing, anyone has questions over integration by parts? It seems like we need to know integration by parts. It's a very big, uh, it's a very big tool for integration. Stanley. Uh, yeah. Okay. Do you want? Do you do you think you can show us how do you get the upper limit one instead of graphing, but by sub algebraically? Ah, uh, well, sure. All right. We said two functions equal to each other, right? Yeah, I did that. Okay. So can you share your screen with us to see what you did? Let's let's use this. Let me pull up this uh, whiteboard. So we have we have e to the x equals to x times e to the x, right? Stanley, can you tell me what should we do from there? We set those two functions equal to each other. If they intersect, right, they have to be equal to each other. So 
So we have e to the x equals the x times e to the x. Does this make sense? Yeah. Okay, so now what do you think? We want to solve for x. What do you think we should do? Uh, divide e to the x on both sides. Okay, that's great. If we divide, what do we get? x equals 1. x equals 1. Okay, let me ask you one more question. What, what guarantees you to be able to divide by e to the x on both sides? Because both sides have uh, e to the x. Right, both sides have e to the x. Can e to the x, because we cannot divide anything by zero, right? Can e to the x ever be zero? No. And can the term e to the x equals to zero? Because if we equal to zero, we won't be able, right? We won't be able to divide by zero. Yeah. So can e to the x ever be zero? No. No. Why not? Because there's no exponent that would allow it to be zero. Right. E to, e to the x term will never be zero. So that guarantees us that we can divide e to the x on both sides, so x equals 1. OK, all right. Thank you, Stanley. Next one. Kiza, oh. Kiza, see your screen, yeah. Oops. No, Kiza's gone. Who's this, 13, 14? Uh, professor, I have a question. It's Amir here. Um, I asked for 15 first, so do you want Kizer to do it or me? Well, whoever claimed first. Whoever claimed first. But well, sometimes... Yeah, Amir claimed a Kizer. Amir claimed 15 first. So Kizer choose another number then. Um, oh, sorry, because on my screen it showed it as first because it was at the same time. I know, I see, I see. Right, you, right, on my screen, you, it showed you right after me. Unless I may have different, unless you have different solution, Kaiser, you can show too, all right? Victoria, Victoria 14. Uh, professor, can I Victoria. present after? Victoria, sure. Victoria, I think that's yours, right? Victoria, we cannot hear you yet. Oh, yes. Can you see my work? Yeah, I see your work. I can hear you. Go and, ahead. Uh, so the question is asking to sketch the region enclosed by the given curves and then find its area. So uh, I'm doing number 14, and the graph is on the right, and you see the. I have to find the area of the shaded region. The question is y equals cosine x and y equals 2 minus cosine x over the interval of 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2 pi. So I could use 2 pi and 0 as the integral limits. The top function would be y equals 2 minus cosine of x, and the bottom is y equals cosine of x. And I will subtract the top uh, from the bottom, and then um, I'll integrate the function. So then... Um, well, first, then you do the antiderivative, so it will be 2x minus 2 sine x. Then you integrate, uh, and then you will plug in 2 pi and 0 into the uh, into the x. So you, uh, you will get 2 times 2 pi minus 2 sine times 2 pi minus 0. And 2 times 2 pi is 4 pi. And then the main thing you put into the 0 times will be 0. So it will be 4 pi minus 0 minus 0. So the answer would be 4 pi. You Looks great. The graph, um, on the right, the top function is y minus y equals 2 minus 2 cosine of x, and the bottom is y equals cosine of x. OK, looks great. Um, let me just say, ask you one thing. This is a perfect work. Um, so with cosine x, right? how do you graph 2 minus cosine x? This is pre-calculus. 
because we treat cosine x as a reference graph. Once we, once we draw cosine x, and we know 2 minus cosine x is the transformation of cosine x, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Do, do you think you, you can talk a little bit about how do we use cosine x to draw 2 minus cosine x? Uh, I think that'll be transformation to the right. No, there's no horizontal transformation. Oh, no, um, I, that'll be the amplitude. Yeah, first look at the negative sign, right? Mm -hmm. This negative sign tells us that's a reflection. Yes. That's a reflection of cosine x in turn with the line of symmetry of x axis. So we mm -hmm. know if it's down. Then okay. what about this two here? This two here is what kind of shift? The shift up and down. Yeah, vertical shift. So it pushed. So it pushed, it pushed the cosine x, a negative cosine x, two units up. So that's why this becomes a three. Because it should be, if it's a negative cosine x, we would have negative one here. Right? We would have the top, you know, graph looks like something like that. Mm -hmm. So that this would be our negative cosine x. Right? Yes. Then positive two here is add two. So pushing this this graph up two units. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next one. Amir, this is you, right? Yes. Okay, so for um, 15, we're given um, x is equal to um, 2y squared. And we're also given x is equal to 4 plus y squared. So from what I did first was I set them equal to each other. And then you get 0 on one side. So you can subtract 4 and subtract y squared. 2y squared minus y squared is y squared. And then we have your b minus 4 is equal to 0. So y squared equals 4. So y can equal either 2 or y can equal negative 2. Now what we can do from here is we can plug in these values into our original equations. So um, 2 times 2 squared, 2 times 4 is 8. So one of our points is um, 8 comma 2. And then if we do negative 2, we'll get the same exact thing. And it works for either equation. And then from here, if we were to graph this quickly. So we would have your negative 2 here. 2. Then 2, 4, 6, 8. And then we would have a point here. Then our 8, comma 2. A comma negative two. Our first graph will look something like this, and then our second graph will be over here. So it will look something like this. And what we're trying to find is this part right here. So um, from there, what we would do is we would write this. It's our area is equal to um, this, 4 plus y squared minus 2y squared. And um, we have here a 2 and a negative 2. So from here, we would get the definite integral from negative 2 to 2 of um, 4 minus y squared. And then all we would do from here is find the antiderivative. So then we would have here 4y minus y cubed over 3. And we would evaluate this and 2 and negative 2. 
And from here, 4 times 2, 8, minus 2 cubed over 3, 8 minus 8 over 3, 24 over 3 minus 8 over 3 is 16 over 3. So you'd have your 16 over 3. And then for the second one, 4 times negative 2, negative 8, negative 24 over 3. You'd have your um, plus 8 over 3, that would equal negative 16 over 3. And then we're subtracting that. So instead we would add here. And our final area is equal to um, 32 over 3. Great. Great. Yeah. Or if we want to save a little time, we could see the integral. The integral is what kind of function? The integral is even, right? Sorry, anyway, Professor, yes, it's even. Right. If even and the lower limit and upper limit off by a sign. Uh, yes. That means we could just, you know, integrate one, uh, evaluate one, and double it. Okay, that's great. All right, thank you, Amir. Thank you, Professor. All right, let's see. Anybody else? Julie, right? Julie, 18. Oh, Kaiser. Kaiser, do you? You probably have a similar answer, right? Yeah, I have like the same answer. Okay, all right. All right, Julie. Julie, are you ready? Okay, good. Julie, I see your screen. I, I can't see my screen. Can you <laughs> see the question though? Uh, yeah. Because I just see a blank screen for some reason. Oh, really? But I oh, see not, Now I see it. Oh, okay. Okay, so um, the first, so I graph the functions on the side. Um, so to find the intersection points of the graph, we have to make sure we have to set them both equal to um, each other. And so that's why I put x equals x squared minus 2. Now since y is equals the absolute value of x, we have to make sure that, that we, um, we have to make sure that we find the two values. So that's why I put case 1 and case 2 since x can be negative or positive. And so on case one, we get um, x equals negative one or x, equal two, x equals two after solving it out. And then case two, we get x equals one or x equal two. So we know that the boundaries of the integration are negative two to two. And so then we find the area by um, making an integral. And so a would equal two times the integral of zero to two um, of x minus x squared minus two times dx. And then you simplify that out. So a equals 2 times negative x to the third over 3 plus x squared over 2 plus 2x. And then you solve for both 0 and 2. And then you get 2 times negative 2 to the third over 3 plus 2 t squared over 2. I'm sorry, I meant to, make, I meant to say negative 2 to the third, right? Yeah, okay. Um, mm -hmm. Plus 2 times 2 minus 0. And then you solve that out again. And then you get 2 times negative 8 over 3 plus 2 plus 4. And then you get 2 times 10 over 3, and then that's 20 over 3. Okay, I just want to, right, okay, it's right. I just want to correct some language you're using. Um, okay. The picture is great, and you split into two cases, that's great. And then you see, you see that's symmetric, that's why you see, right? That's why I put the 2 times that. Exactly. Okay, so this here, let me. So this here is not evaluation or solving. So what is this step? From this step to this step, what do we call it? Um, that's after you solve out the integral. Right. Actually, we don't call solve integral. Oh, OK. We call antiderivative or integration. So we call integral, either we call integration or we call antiderivative. The antiderivative of x is x squared divided by 2, so on and so forth. Then later on, this is not solving, it's the evaluation. It's evaluation at the 2. Here is the evaluation at the 0. Right? Just right. a language, you know, mathematical language. All right, okay, great. Thank you, Zuli. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody has any questions? Oh, why did the boundaries turn from 2 to 0? Okay, 
you probably missed the point. You see the picture is symmetric, right? We know, uh, and then we know the, um, the both functions are symmetric over y-axis, especially after you graph out. You see from negative two to two is a, is a two times of from zero to two. Does that make sense? Okay, all right, thank you. Anybody has any other questions? Okay, I think you guys did a fantastic job, all right? Um, let's see, I know, let's, let's uh, let, me, let me bring up the screen. Um, right, so we did it from 11 to 18. Let's, let's see if I can find anything else interesting to do. Okay, I know some of you didn't get a chance to present. Let me try to find. Okay, let's try this. The only thing we're left is uh, the volume, which if we could do this, we can do the volume. Uh, Okay, let's do 20. So, kids, are, so you can show your work. All right, oops. Oh, someone else, if you want to show work. All right, so let's do 20. Mm. 21. Let's try 20, 21. Right, this one we have to use a graph. Right, let's just try twenty twenty one.
Okay, Alexandra wants to try 20. All right. Yeah, if you if you are ready, go ahead. Yes, now you are presenter, Alexandra. Good morning. Good morning. Could you see the photo? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just going to present from my iPad because I can't see the photo right now, but it's okay. okay. We're given three equations. I, re I rearranged them all in terms of y. I knew that it's only asking for um, values of when x is greater than zero, so positive values, and I graphed it. Um, below and I know that the domain is from 0 to 2 but since we have three equations I separate the, I separated them into two parts so um, the first integral was from 0 to 1 and I knew that the upper the upper um, equation was 2x squared and then subtracted by the lower which was um, 1 fourth x squared and then I found the integral and then um, since the integral is from 0 to 1, I mean, I, I'm sorry, I found the antiderivative, which was 2 third x to the third minus 112 x to the third. And then I had plugged in for the value of 1. And since I knew that if you plug in 0, the whole, the whole equation will equal to 0, I had only solved for value of 1, which was 7 over 12, um, boxed in orange. And then the second area that I found, um, I knew that it was from 1 to 2. And the upper equation was uh, y equals 3 minus x. And then I subtracted that from the lower, which was, again, 1 fourth x squared. And then I found the antiderivative. Then I plugged in for 2. And then since I already knew the value when x equals 1, I just that in and then I simplified and got 11 over 4. So we have two areas and I know that I have to add them to find the total and my um, final answer was 10 over 3. Okay so this one is a little bit tricky right? Let's see the picture because it's bounded by three functions. We have quarter x squared a quarter x squared, we have 2x squared, then we have this y equals 3 minus x line. So Alexandra is saying, okay, x greater than or equal to 0. So Alexandra, why is the, how is, how did you get your upper limit to be 1? How did you set up the integration? Oh, um, I, I split both of them because I knew that the total area had to be from 0 to 2 and I knew that the intersection um, oh I see, I see you said okay I, I may not be able to use one integration to get the area you split into two yeah so the first one you were saying from 0 to 1 right but uh, my question is how do you get this one here one yeah 
Zero we know, right? Zero is from this condition x greater than or equal to zero. Mm -hmm. So x, I found that I split it at x equals one because the intersection between um, y equals one fourth x squared and y equals three minus x would be, um, they would equal each other at x equals one. So basically you get it from the graph. Yes. But how do you, how, if you you know, can you get it from the uh, algebraic? Um, oh, I would set one fourth x squared equal to three minus x. Okay, great. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's one. So you were saying, right, for this one, we split into two from zero to one. The upper function is this two x squared. The lower function is a quarter x squared. So we subtract or integrate that part. 7 over 12. My second one is that from 1 to 2. Also, the upper function is 3 minus x, the lower function is quarter x squared. Great. Great. Anybody has any question? Okay, good job. So, this is uh, right, another typical, you know, typical exam question. Right, so this area is not a one simple region. Right, we have to split into two. We won't be able to set up as one integration from one to two to solve it. Right, because we don't have we we don't have a constant to work with. So we split into two integrations to find the area. Okay, great job, Alexandra. Anybody else? Uh, any anyone has any question? All right. Anybody would like to try twenty one? Oh, uh, Noella is suggesting for five more minutes, sure. Okay,
we only have two more sections to go, but we still have a lot of time left for this semester. I think uh, some of you can finish this semester earlier. Yeah, for the final, of course, we will review it. Oh, so when is the final, you mean, Amir? The final is supposed to be, I think, uh, supposed to be uh, December 17th. So we finish, I think, the last day of class. Last day of class was, was 11. Then December, then afterwards, not 11, 10. December 10th is our last class. Oh, no, hold on. December 7th. December 7 is our last class, then following by a reading week. And the department scheduled, scheduled the final to be 17. Uh, but for some of you, you can finish this semester early. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a review, a final review sheet. Uh, so you prepare yourself. So the final, right, then I'll give a, then I'll, we'll give a final. Um, so I'm thinking this way. I'm thinking because some of you and most of you here, right now I only have 23 out of, out of 38 or 42 students. For some of you, you know, in my head, you already get A because you presented enough times. And uh, I see your homework. I see your online homework finished pretty good. So I, I know, you know, you, you, you have mastered the material. So for those people, you know, for some of you, you can finish early by doing what? I'll let you know exactly. I'll post on the uh, CUNY Blackboard, all right? Because if you are able to, cause if you are able to sh show me, you know, you are fully mastered this material. You know, I, I don't want to keep you here in the class. You, know, you, you can rest. Or you can learn something new, something more. You can prepare for your 155 class, which you know I'm not able to talk in this in this 150 course. And nowadays, study is not only study in the class. You you can study by search, you know, by following vi uh, YouTube videos, or by following some other other college uh, posted materials. So basically, self-study is very important at this point for this kind of time, or maybe for future as well. You don't really have to learn from teachers, right? But teachers may be sometimes can show you some shortcuts. But the truly, you know, technology is so advanced nowadays, you can learn yourself. Um, so, right, so basically I'm thinking of free some of you. You, you have been doing very well. Your understanding level is great. But for final, part of the final is still presentation. 
I will give um, a review sheet. Um, I will give you a review sheet, but this review, you know, because I'm, I'm still thinking, yeah, I'm going to make up some questions and post it on Blackboard as a review sheet. Uh, then maybe I'll pick some questions as a final. Then as part of the, part of the, to gain full credits, you have to show me. But show me is not up to you to pick questions. It will be up to me to choose questions to ask you. But surely I will give you a review sheet. Okay, Noel, are you ready? Go ahead. Let's talk about 21. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you may go ahead now. You are presenter. Oh, uh, Henny, part of the final, part of the final is presentation. All right. So it's more like an interview now. Because for me to give a fair grade to everyone, you know, I really have to know who did the work. Uh, right, I'll let you know the details. We still have time. We still have time to prepare. Julia, only for some people, not for everybody. This, this, uh, what I was thinking is not an option for everybody. No. What I was thinking is an option for those people who's been attending the class, who's been uh, submitting their homework, who's been presenting and presenting very well, and who already showed me they, they totally mastered the material. Okay, only for those bunch of people. It's not for everybody. It's not a choice. Well, it's my choice, you know, I will tell, you know, I will, I will tell. Yes, of course, right, you still have the rest of the right, semester to present, yeah, to finish your homework. Okay, Noella, are you ready? Good morning, Professor. When I tried to upload my work, it said that um, uh, the folder has exceeded the limit. So I think we need to delete a couple of the files on there for me to upload my work. Oh, okay. No problem. We're waiting for you. We're waiting mm -hmm. for you. So for new material, we only have two sections to go. After we finish the two sections, uh, we're going to review. Right, for 150 course, we only cover three concepts, limits, differentiation, and integration. And 7.1 is important. Okay, 7.1, make sure you understand, make sure you can do the homework and you can do the work I assigned. You know, even if you haven't presented anything yet, you know, some other people presented, it probably helps you to understand better. Because in chapter, in 7.2, 7.3, we're going to rotate this region, right? 7.1, we're in two dimension world. We're trying to find the area of a region. But 7.2 and 7.3, we're going to rotate this region 
with x axis or with y axis to form a 3D object. And then we want to find the volume of the 3D object. So it's important to be able to draw the region you know, for given conditions. So we need, so 7.2, 7.3, we need the basics of 7.1. Anybody has any question? Professor, I think you have to delete the files on your end because it's not letting me upload my work at all. Delete my file? What do you mean? So under share files, I think there are way too many um, files that we shared previously. So since there's, um, it exceeds that limit, it doesn't let me upload my work. Oh, hold on a second. Where is that? So when you go to share files, you can see how um, there are files that are under that were shared before in the prior classes. I think we have to remove and delete those. We didn't share files. We shared the application or screen. No, in the main room files that were shared previously. Hold on a second. Let me see. Oh, I see. So I have to delete them, right? Yeah. Remove file. Oh, I see. Thank you. It's removing. It takes so slow. Do you want to try now? Why is being delete? Yeah, Amir, let's wait for her a little bit. I'm removing files. So, Noella, can you try? Can you keep trying? Because I delete two files. Yeah, I'm trying right now. It's taking time to upload. Okay. Okay, three files being deleted. Are you able to see my work? It is strange. It's the screen is black, but I do see your file name appeared on the screen. So it doesn't show anything at all except a black screen. It doesn't show anything but your file name. On the bottom, it shows your file name, but the screen is black.
Oh, other people can see your work. Go ahead. Only me is not seeing it. Why I don't know one? Okay, I can walk through it verbally then. It disappeared from my screen. Noella, we cannot hear you. I know we don't see your screen. I don't even see the file name anymore. Oh, yeah, I see your screen now. Noella, I see your screen. Can I? I'm so sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, so this question, we were given y equals cosine x and y equals sine 2x in the interval 0 to pi over 2. So in order to find um, where to split the integrals, um, since they cross each other twice, since there are two areas that we need to solve for, um, I set cosine x equal to sine 2x. From there, um, I use a double angle formula to substitute um, 2 sine x co times cosine x as sine 2x. From there, um, I got cosine um, x equals 0. And in that case, x would equal 2 pi over 2. And then in the other um, equation, 2 sine x minus 1. In that case, x would equal 2 pi over 6. So from there, I split the, integral, uh, the interval from 0 to pi over 2 into two um, intervals from 0 to pi over 6 and then pi over 6 to pi over 2. Um, in the first case, um, from 0 to pi over 6, we know that cosine x is the top function. And then um, sine 2x is the bottom function. So we subtract the bottom function from the top function. We apply the same thing to um, <clears throat> the other interval. So from there, I substituted the um, upper and lower boundaries limit. And from there, I added them. So 104 plus 104 equals 204. And simplifying that gives us 1 over 2. Great. Great. Anybody has any questions? Great job. So even when given the interval from 0 to pi over 2, right? but when given the hint, we have two. It's, it's a two regions. So we need to solve for the intersection. So we get a pi over 2 and a pi over 6. Great job, Noella. Anybody has any question? Good job. Thank you. OK, anyone has any question? OK, if not, um, I don't want to talk about new material today. We only have two sections left. So I'm going to compile a review sheet. Uh, I'm going to compile a review sheet and then post it on Blackboard. All right. Then when we review from the very beginning of limit, differentiation, implicit differentiation, we just focus on the review sheet. Um, yeah, we, we, we will finish class early today. Anybody has any questions? For next time, let's see. Let's go to, let's go to the chapter review maybe. Cause this, this chapter, I don't see anything good here to do anymore. Let's go to chapter review.
Okay, chapter review is on page 427. Yeah, you see from one to four is still similar. Let's see. Let's see if we can find some challenging ones. Oh, okay. Those are good. Oh, no. Those are final volumes. Final volumes. Okay. If you like to try for next class, try those four. Try one to four. This is chapter uh, page four twenty eight, page four hundred twenty eight, one to four. All right, and if you think you have time, um, you know, go ahead to review preview seven point two, which means we're going to rotate the region either along x-axis or along y-axis to form a 3D object. Then try to find a volume of the 3D object. OK, any other questions? Next class. Yeah, Andrew wants to know how many times you have presented it. Let me see. So, Andrew. No, what's your last name? You know, the CUNY, CUNY first and CUNY Blackboard, they do not, they're not consistent. One is by CUNY first going from last name, first name. Blackboard goes first name to last name. I always have problem finding the student's name. Oh, okay, here. Then you, you present, I have seven times here recorded. Hanging. Okay, I have some people presented 15 times already. Hand in your last name. L. Seven times also, Hand in. Yeah, I did have somebody already reached 15 times. Let's see. Let me just read. Let's just let me just read. Okay, so presentation. Okay, let, let me just from the beginning. So Zahara one time. Tanzania one time. Malika eleven times. Mikhail two times. This is uh Moatasim. Uh Isam Adam. Last name is A S H M A W Y. No time. Didn't even present any time yet. Ursa four times, Raphael, Mark seven times, Alexandra nine times, Euradia no time, Emily four times, Jason three times, Angel seven times, Zuli nine times, Noella reached the maximum fifteen times, Stanley Christopher three times, Katie two times. Karen seven times, Julia two times, Kaza nine times, Victoria seven times, Raymond no time, 
Henning seven times, Carlos six times, Amir twelve times, Vaughn two times. This is Joe Vicker no time, George two times, Karishima three times, Victor one time, Anna two times, Labiba one time, Sophia two times. Hilary one time, Ryan Nicholas one time, Anastasia one time, uh, Mo, Mo, Mohira, M O K H I R A two times, Re four times, Fadawa three times. Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, so I have a, right, I have fifteen times and twelve times in lead. A presentation, Sophia. Presentation means means a fully presentation. Means okay, if you if you make mistake, uh, you are able to make corrections on your own mistake. Then that would be counted as one presentation. But if you only present. If you're not able to correct your own mistake, um, you know, I did not mark down as a fully, I, I don't give credits for presentation. Is there some confusing there? Okay, any other questions? Yeah, if not, um, keep studying, all right? Keep studying and uh, see you next week. And uh, hopefully, I'll you know I'll I'll be able to post a review sheet as soon as possible. All right. All right. Thank you. Have a good weekend.